This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about whether Bitcoin transaction fees are too high. Today, people are saying high transaction fees are killing Bitcoin, but just a few months ago, people were saying the exact opposite, that low transaction fees were killing Bitcoin. So which one is it really? I think in order to answer this question, we need to take a few steps back and set the context for this discussion. So when a Bitcoin miner successfully mines a block, that miner receives the block subsidy of 6.25 Bitcoin to be cut in half next April and every four years thereafter, thus asymptotically approaching zero. This is the halving, of course. So the miner receives the block subsidy and the miner also receives, and a lot of newbies don't realize this, the miner also receives transaction fees for every transaction that has been included in that block. Now, the Bitcoin transaction fee market is a free market where transaction fees are a function of supply and demand. These fees are not set by the hardware wallet manufacturers, as some beginners seem to believe. They're not set by Ledger, Trezor, Coldcard, Blockstream, any other company in the space, or anybody else. There is, in fact, no centralized authority that sets transaction fees. And if there were, that would definitely be a potential attack vector. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. It really does help out. Hit the like button, leave a comment, question, and share this video. So here's the big question and the larger context for answering the question of whether Bitcoin transaction fees are too high. The big question is, how do you want Bitcoin miners to be compensated over the long term? Bitcoin miners have these real world expenses like electricity and mining rigs. So where should their revenues come from? Do you want to have an infinite tail emission, i.e. issue more Bitcoin to miners forever with each block mined? If so, that means that Bitcoin's 21 million max supply is dead and you've just put a knife into the heart of the protocol as well as what everyone knows best about Bitcoin, which is this max supply of 21 million. If you don't want to have this infinite tail emission, then you need to accept the fact that Bitcoin miners will eventually make all of their revenues from transaction fees. This also happens to be how Satoshi designed the protocol, and that's a good thing as well. In 2023, there have already been blocks where the total transaction fees have exceeded the block subsidy of 6.25 Bitcoin. So again, you have the block subsidy, and then you have the transaction fees. If we go to mempool.space, if we look at block 7, 788,695, we can see the total fees for this block were 6.701 Bitcoin, and that's on top of the 6.25 Bitcoin uh, block subsidy. So we can see the total here, almost 13 Bitcoin. Something similar happened on December 16th with block 821485. And this also happened, um, I think this first one was actually from May. There's a second one from December 16th, block 821513. In that previous block, the total fees were again more than the block subsidy. They were 7.3 Bitcoin. And on December 16th, they were almost at the block sub subsidy, 6.247, so almost 6.25. So this process of replacing block subsidy revenue with transaction fee revenue, which we would expect maybe to happen in the distant, distant future, appears to have already begun. And this is probably part of Satoshi's plan question is, have Bitcoin transaction fees entered a new permanently higher regime? I think it's impossible to know for sure, but it is certainly possible, especially with the coming halving and exploding institutional interest around Bitcoin. Much of the spike in transaction fees in 2023, as we've been talking about, has also been driven by inscriptions, also known as Bitcoin NFTs, so you can really put any sort of data onto the Bitcoin blockchain using this technology. Also BRC20 tokens, these are basically altcoin ship coins on Bitcoin. So a lot of the spike in these transaction fees has been driven by inscriptions, BRC20 tokens, what you might call ordinals. Now, inscriptions are mostly garbage kitsch art, though one could theoretically upload something useful, like a 3D printer file of certain things, if you know what I mean, or censored free speech document. BRC20 tokens are for stupid gamblers. Special note, people often call inscriptions ordinals, but ordinals are really just an ordering system. They're an external way of tracking sats and do not in themselves take up block space. But this is the real problem. The real problem is inscriptions and also the issuance of BRC20 tokens, which require spending fees on the Bitcoin blockchain. That being said, that being said that all these things are garbage, it's still impossible to stop people from adding arbitrary data to the Bitcoin blockchain. And I'll repeat that because a lot of people still don't understand this. They want the Bitcoin blockchain to be this pure, beautiful, white marble surface. And I do too. But unfortunately, 
it is impossible to stop people from adding arbitrary data to the Bitcoin blockchain. The witness discount, the discounted fees from the 2017 SegWit upgrade definitely makes it cheaper to do these inscriptions, but we're not going to roll back SegWit. That's just never going to happen, which among other things, SegWit made possible the Lightning Network. Trying to stop ordinals, inscriptions, BRC20 tokens could lead to even worse outcomes, and we have to think these through as well, because if you don't let people add data to the witness data or the op return, witness data is where the inscriptions are put, the op return is a place that was designed specifically per, for putting arbitrary data on the blockchain. It's a fairly small amount of space, but if you don't let people add data to these two places, they will always, and they can always, embed it in other ways that are less efficient and more difficult for nodes to prune. Or nodes, inscriptions, BRC20 tokens are annoying, but they are not a threat to, to the network. And we still have a maximum block size of essentially four megabytes when you take into account the four million weight units, and that's a whole other discussion. Miners, mining pools like Ocean are free not to include these transactions, these inscriptions, in a block if they so choose. But I think it's a bad business decision, and mining pools that want to survive over the long term should always include the highest fee transactions in their blocks. And I think that not doing so today is really what you might call a temporary luxury, and it will not last. If your mining pool doesn't include an inscription transaction, another mining pool will include it if they like the transaction fee. And again, mining pools get to build their own blocks and decide which transactions to include in a block. So you can't stop other mining pools from including an inscription transaction, even if you don't want to include it. The other way of attacking inscriptions could be you could try to change the Bitcoin consensus rules to exclude inscriptions somehow. But then this is a very, very dangerous game. Then you create this cat and mouse game that you can never win because what happens is you tweak the consensus rules to exclude current inscriptions, how they're currently done. Then the inscriptors tweak their method and then you need to modify consensus rules again to exclude their latest tweak. And there are literally thousands and thousands of different tricks that they can use to try to keep these inscriptions in the block. So you cannot win this game, but it gets worse because if you try to play this game, it might give regulators the idea that there's a way for Bitcoin devs and the full nodes that agree to run their code to exclude quote unquote undesired transactions as defined by that government and by those regulators. And there might, they might apply pressure to the devs and the full nodes to change the code to exclude what you might call uh, uh, undesired transactions. This is what the government would say. If you can modify the consensus rules to exclude this particular form of JPEGs, like inscriptions, please do it to exclude OFAC non-compliant transactions as well. So if you make it easy to tweak the software, to tweak the consensus rules, upgrade Bitcoin Core, roll it out to the nodes, if you make this a really easy pipeline, that allows you to, to tweak the software again and again to exclude certain transactions from the mempool or from somewhere else, a government could use this as a true censorship attack vector. Inscriptions really do suck, but I think they're here to stay. The good news is that most JPEGs will eventually get priced out by large monetary transactions, since it is Bitcoin's destiny to become the world's premier monetary settlement layer. I think this will happen, and it will happen naturally. We don't need to force the JPEGs off. They're just going to be priced out along with other uses. So the question, are Bitcoin transaction fees today too high? I think in one sense, from sort of a free market perspective, transaction fees can never be too high or too low. This is just our subjective view of them, or they might be too high or too low for certain people. But you might also say that transaction fees are at exactly the level that the free market is setting them, and that it's sort of logically inconsistent to call them too high or too low. They just are what they are. But we could also ask the question, what's a natural level for Bitcoin? transaction fees. It's really impossible to say, but I think we can estimate where they would be today if there were no block subsidy of 6.25 Bitcoin. Annual mining revenues have been about $10 billion over the past 12 months. Even during this bear market, they have been pumped a little bit by inscriptions, but let's say they're $10 billion a year, annual mining revenue of $10 billion a year. We have approximately every 30 days about 15, 16 million transactions times 12 months. So call it somewhere between 150 and 200 million transactions per year taking place on the Bitcoin network. Let's just call it 190 million transactions. If we divide those two things, that's about $52 transaction fees 
if there were no, no minor subsidies. So we're just saying all of the revenue here, what if it just came from transactions? And if it did, how much would the average transaction fee cost? Interestingly enough, that $52 transaction fee, that's approximately what it costs in fiat to send a wire transfer today, something like $35, $40, same order of magnitude, which is today wire transfers of course are today's gold standard in the fiat system for a final settlement for a monetary transaction and obviously bitcoin offers even better final final settlement uh, assurances because traditional fiat transactions even wires can sometimes be reversed but in this case uh, there's no one that can reverse a transaction once it, it's embedded on the bitcoin blockchain if you want to see where i'm getting my data from this is the clark moody dashboard if you go under chain security here, you can see annual mining revenue. And if you go under transactions, you can see how many transactions over the past 30 days. I just multiplied this by 12, even though they're 365 days in the year. But you still get that about $52 uh, per transaction fee. Now, transaction fees are set based on the amount of block space, the amount of data used. They're not set uh, in, a, in any other way. We're going to talk about that more in detail. They're also a function of how quickly you want to get your transaction included in a block. So this is some sort of average or median transaction fee. And if you're willing to wait a little bit longer and you had less data in your transaction, if it was less data intensive, the transaction fees could be lower. But this does show that transaction fees could rise by an order of magnitude or even a couple order, orders of magnitude. Here's the conclusion, though. I think it's a big mistake to want Bitcoin transaction fees to quote unquote stay low forever. Wanting Bitcoin transaction fees to stay low forever is a little bit like wanting Bitcoin's price to stay low forever. At one Bitcoin equals one dollar, one US dollar, most people in the world could afford a whole Bitcoin. But Bitcoin with a total market cap of 21 million, 21 million dollars is a useless network. It's not large enough to service a global economy in the trillions. It's not even large enough to service a small city. So wanting Bitcoin transactions fees to stay low forever is the same kind of thinking, I'm afraid. It sounds really egalitarian, but it's not because if the Bitcoin miners cannot afford to secure Bitcoin, then the network has no value to anyone, including the global poor, including those in hyperinflationary and totalitarian regimes that Bitcoin is so well suited for. Now, no one knows where fees are going in the short term or the medium term, but I do think that transaction fees are headed much higher in the long term, probably both in fiat and in sats in BTC terms, and that this is necessary if we want Bitcoin, if we want the Bitcoin network to succeed at a global scale. This will indeed create problems for small hodlers while simultaneously spurring innovation with different payment rails, what people traditionally call layers, but you can even think of them as payment rails, how you're going to send your Bitcoin. But this will, these higher fees on chain will spur innovation innovations like Lightning, Fediments, and other approaches that we probably haven't even thought of yet. Now, in the coming days, what I want to discuss is things like UTXO management. I know a lot of you have been asking me about that stranded sats, moving between on-chain, Lightning, Liquid, some of these things and some of these strategies and other ways that we can prepare for a high fee environment. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.